Hello, and welcome to the hottest body in the world. Let's meet our contestants. First up, we have Barb. Next up is Patty. Finally, we have Jane. Who do you think will win the title of the hottest body in the world? Well, I can guarantee you it won't be any of these people. To find the world's hottest body, we must delve deep into the Pacific Ocean, down to the aquatic ecosystem that is known as Deep Sea. Deep down on the ocean floor, where little to no light is received, we find our buddies relaxing. What, you don't see them? That's because they're inside this hydrothermal vent. A hydrothermal vent is a fissure in the bottom of oceans that releases black clouds. The temperature released from these vents is a good 80 degrees Celsius, or 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Any animal that chooses to live in these vents would practically die. But not the Pompeii worm, the focal point of this project. The Pompeii worm is one of the select group of animals that can survive this temperature. Still think these people deserve the title of hottest body? Now the Pompeii worm isn't the hottest animal there is, as the tardigrade can survive temperatures almost double that of the worm, but second place isn't bad, right? So anyway, this Pompeii worm is obviously an underwater creature. It averages about 4 inches. On its back, we see black hair-like things. As already stated, it lives in the hydrothermal vents. Its body rests inside while its head hangs out into the water. Here, it can breathe and feed on any bacteria that pass by. Now up to this point, you may think that the worm has a symbiotic relationship with the vent. Well, you'd be wrong. Remember that hair I was telling you about on the worm's back? It's actually not hair. This hair is actually thermophilic bacteria. Without the bacteria, the worm would look like this. And the worm would never survive the vents. The bacteria form in centimeter long clumps on the worm's back. The bacteria is a living creature, just like the worm. This is where the symbiotic relationship comes in. The worm actually feeds the bacteria by excreting a certain mucosa from its back. Now you're probably thinking, why on earth would the worm let bacteria live on its back? Well, it has a very good reason. Here we see the worm going into the vent. The worm just died. Lovely, right? Well, with the bacteria on its back, it can survive these temperatures. This is where knowledge of the bacteria comes in handy. Thermophilic bacteria is special as it thrives in temperatures about 50 degrees Celsius. This includes places like hot springs, decaying plants, and of course, hydrothermic vents. The bacteria has special enzymes that allow it to survive these extreme conditions. So that's pretty much the basis of the relationship. Both organisms benefit from the other, making it mutualistic. The bacteria allows the worm to survive heat, and the worm in turn feeds the bacteria and gives it a home, as well as transportation. The hydrothermal vents also benefit from these two. As the worm goes into the vent, some bacteria goes into the vent freely, and thus contributes to the ecosystem of said vent. So the vents are benefited by doing absolutely nothing. That being said, if either animal was lost, the ecosystem of the hydrothermal vents could change drastically, thus affecting deep ocean's life. If the worms ceased to exist, then the bacteria would have to find a new source of food, as it wouldn't have the worm to feed off of. As for the worm, if the bacteria was to die, then the worm would never be able to survive the vents. Then it would either have to find a new home and survive those new conditions, or die. That's basically everything there is to know about the symbiosis between the worm and the bacteria. There really isn't many disadvantages between them, besides the fact that the bacteria must stay with the worm at all times, never able to stray away. At that, the science project is done. There are many more symbiotic relationships to be found out there in the world, and all have a unique way of contributing to the Earth as a whole. Until next time.